In Bloxy2, we have introduced a new dynamic data block for the Gutenberg editor. This block lets you easily pull in dynamic information from pretty much any place on your website, such as the metadata information of a post or page, as well as any custom fields implemented using popular plugins such as ACF, Metabox, and more. The block is quite simple to understand. Alone, it may be helpful to grab meta fields inside of a post. But where it really shines is in combination with something like the advanced post blocks or a template system, such as the templates powered by our content blocks feature. We will split this tutorial into three parts. In the first part, we'll check out how the block works, what its capabilities are, and what you can do with it. In the second part, we'll check out a few examples where the dynamic data block can be used in a loop, such as a posts or products loop. And in the final part, we'll check out its integration with custom field solutions. And before we continue, we must note that it is important to be familiar with the Gutenberg editor. Let's start with the basics. We already have a post here that has all of its metadata fields populated, such as an excerpt, a featured image, and so on. Inserting a dynamic data block into this post gives us a few options for the data that can be shown. These options can be the title of the post, its excerpt, the post dates, the number of comments, the taxonomy terms that are assigned to it, the author that has published the post, including its avatar, or even the featured image of the post. Of course, each option has its own contextual settings. The title content source gives you an option to make the output a clickable link directing users to the post. The excerpt content source gives you an option to shorten the excerpt to a specific length. The post date content source gives you an option to display either the published or modified date and even a choice to change the format the date time is shown in. The comments content source lets you display how many comments a post might have. The terms content source lets you display the taxonomy terms that are assigned to this post, such as categories or tags, and this also works for custom taxonomies, if there are any. And the author content source lets you display the author information, such as their name or email address. And finally, the featured image content source lets you display the featured image that has been assigned. However, this option is a bit more interesting, as it lets you not just display the image as is. The cover view type is the peculiar option here, as it turns the block into something like a group, where you can add additional blocks into it. This scenario is really powerful in combination with a post loop, as it will let you create a type of design where the entire postcard is represented as the featured image and information is nicely laid out on top of it. Additionally, there are image aspect ratio and size controls when choosing featured image as the content source. These should let you achieve the perfect design. One more thing that we like to note before closing this video is the HTML output of this block when it is set to render text. By default, the HTML output is to render the content inside of a div tag. But for most content sources, you also have the ability to render the block as a span, a P tag, or even one of the six headings. Now that we're done with the basics, we'll invite you to continue watching part two of this tutorial. We'll build a few loops with posts, taxonomy terms, and even products. And we'll see how the dynamic data block can be used for a myriad of cases.